The trees that were planted in the Garden of Eden were not watered by rain. It's pointed out in Genesis chapter 2 verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. The trees also received water from the river that ran through it. As we've already discussed the tree of life, we're going to focus on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, we read, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. It was at this very tree that the serpent deceived the first woman Eve causing her to sin. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, we read of three ways in which Eve sinned against our Lord. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to desire to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. We see that Satan the devil, the original serpent, that deceived the woman, tried to do the same with our Lord Jesus after his forty days and forty nights in the wilderness. In Luke chapter 4, you'll find three ways in which Satan tempted our Lord Jesus. First, that he makes stones bread. In the same way the woman saw in Genesis 3.6, the tree was good for food. Satan also showed all the kingdoms and the glory of the world in a moment of time to our Lord Jesus. We notice in Genesis 3.6, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Finally, Satan tried to test our Lord Jesus to see if God's word was true. In all three ways, he failed. But even after 40 days and nights of not eating food or drinking water, our Lord Jesus Christ came out victorious. In this way we can see that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not merely a tree, but it symbolized the authority that God had over his creation. The tree itself did not give man the ability to reason what was good and what was evil. As many claim today, they claim to know what is good and evil. This very act alone is an act of idolatry. Notice the humble position our Lord took when a man approached him calling him good master. Matthew 19, 16 and 17. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. What a fine example for all Christians to follow. In part four, we will discuss the river in the garden.